Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of Top Nuggets. Top Nuggets is where we help today's believers in the areas of faith, personal growth, and leadership. And today I want to talk to the men out there. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys. This video is for you. I want to ask you a simple question. Are you a good man? And I'm, the reason I'm asking this is because most of us think of ourselves as good men in a bad world. And uh, I, I, I grew up thinking that of myself, and, and I, I still think of myself that way. But a scripture really, really grabbed my heart one day as I was reading the scriptures and uh, made me reconsider if I am really a good man. And that scripture is found in Proverbs 13.22, which says this. It says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. So there's two, part to, two parts to that passage, that verse. But the first part really shook me uh, because, uh, to be honest, I, I, I had a hard time leaving an inheritance for my own children and much less my children's children. Of course, I'm not a grandfather yet, but it, these are things you think about when you become a dad, right? You, you, you think about, uh, you imagine your kids growing up and having their own kids one day. And uh, uh, it's, it's funny because we always picture ourselves as like, having them over uh, for a Sunday dinner or something like that. And, and we always see ourselves as, you know, prosperous and being able to provide for our kids and to also being able to give good things to our grandchildren. So I always thought that a good man was someone who would provide for his children, period. But the Bible says for his children, for his children's children. So basically for your grandkids someday. And uh, that really knocked me. It took me, uh, took me two steps back because um, I was like, you know what? I, I'm not really cutting it there. And uh, the Bible says a good man does that. So it made me question, am I a good man? But there's hope. Obviously, I mean, many of you guys might be in the same boat as me. Maybe you're, you know, able to provide for your kids, but maybe not your grandkids yet. Or like I say, yet. Maybe in the hope of someday. Or maybe... You're just not in that place where you even have hope that you will be able to provide for your grandkids someday. But there's hope. In the same verse, and I like the way uh, Solomon wrote this because it's really uh, it's a, like a double thing. The first part makes you question if you're a good man, which is a good thing because we need that from the, the Word of God. We need the Word of God to shake us up sometimes and to uh, shake us so that we actually desire to step up to the plate and improve ourselves. I'm big in, in personal growth, personal development, and I think that with God's help and with God's Word, we should be able to become those good men. But if you're not there yet, there's hope because God is absolutely amazing. And I love in the Bible when there's a but, right? There's a, whenever there's a but, it's always uh, going to bring something very, very interesting or it's going to give you hope uh, or, or it's going to bring a scripture like the scripture into more light. And the second part of the passage says, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. So the first part talks about being a good man. But now let me ask you another question. Are you a righteous man? If you are a righteous man, in other words, someone who has the law of God at heart, who wants to please the Lord, who wants to serve God, who who's trying as best he can to love his neighbor as himself, uh, who, who basically has a, a heart after God's heart, right? Kind of like King David. So if you're righteous, if you long for righteousness in your life, there's hope. So a good man, we know what that does. But a righteous man will get the Lord's help because guess what? The Lord stores up the wealth of the sinner. He lays it up for the righteous. Uh, there's a man called Peter C. Wagner. He's deceased today. He was a great Bible uh, teacher and scholar. He wrote a book called um, the, Tran the Great Transfer of Wealth, if I'm not mistaken. And he's talking about how in the end times he believed that. Uh, he based it uh, in a passage in the book of Isaiah. He was talking about how in the end times he believed that God was storing wealth for the righteous to be transferred into their hands to advance the kingdom of God. Which is not that far-fetched because we know that Jesus said the end would only come once the kingdom of God has been preached all over the world. 
So if you're going to preach the kingdom of God all over the world, it's going to take some measure of resources to get to that, to, to achieve that goal, that end, right? And then the end will come. So the G, uh, Jesus, the, the table would, will be set for his return to actually happen. So that's interesting. Uh, it was an interesting theory that uh, Peter C. Wagner brought up. So don't lose hope. If you don't feel like you're a good man, if you base it on that verse, that first part alone, you might feel like I did. Oh, I'm not a good man. But if you're a righteous man, there's hope that you will become a good man eventually because God will take the wealth of sinners and put it into your hands because guess what? He prefers having wealth in the hands of the righteous because they'll do something good with it than to have it in the hands of sinners. So stop thinking that the devil has a, the, the upper hand when it comes to money. God has the upper hand when it comes to money and he gives it to those who are righteous and are gonna do great things for his kingdom. So there's hope for us. There's hope for us who don't feel like we're good men right now. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope this has helped you and I hope this has maybe even shaken you if you don't feel you're a good man. Always try to get to that level where you'll feel like, hey, I'm providing for my kids, but I'm also providing for my future grandkids or my existing grandkids. I hope this has blessed you. If it has, make sure you share it. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next Stop Nugget.